Hi, I'm Jack Weeks for GPM Hydraulic Consulting, the nation's leader in maintenance hydraulic training, consulting, and reliability assessments. The single most important concept to grasp in hydraulics is the difference between pressure and flow. It is the failure to understand this concept that makes more parts changers and fewer hydraulic troubleshooters. Most people think that the pump pumps the pressure. In other words, that's where the pressure comes from. It comes from the pump. And if the system pressure is lower than it should be, the problem is probably the pump. This is not true. The pump doesn't pump pressure. It delivers a rate of flow. That flow meets with and hopefully overcomes a resistance. And the result of this is pressure. So what you're reading on a gauge is not how much pressure the pump is putting out. What you're reading is the amount of resistance currently being overcome in the machine. We illustrate this in our workshops using this animated schematic. Very simple little schematic, just a few components on it. This is the symbol for the hydraulic reservoir. The pump gets its fluid from the reservoir. This symbol for a pump, it's drawn round because the pump has a shaft that turns. Hydraulic motors are drawn round too because they also have a shaft that turns. Now you see this arrow pointing out. That indicates an output. And since the arrowhead is filled in, that means our output is a liquid. This same symbol with just the outline of an arrowhead would be a symbol for an air compressor. This is a fixed displacement pump. It doesn't have any adjustments to it. Its flow is determined by two factors. It's determined by its displacement and the speed of the drive motor. Now when we're tracing the hydraulic flow on a schematic and we get to a T in the line, then we have to follow both directions to determine the path of least resistance. Hydraulic oil will always take the path of least resistance. I've known some people like that too. Now if we follow it to the left, we get to a box that has an arrow in it. Now boxes with arrows in them typically are going to mean a valve. In this particular case, we have a relief valve. And the direction of the arrow indicates the direction of flow through the valve. Notice, however, that the arrow is not touching the inlet or the outlet ports. That means that our relief valve is a normally closed valve. On hydraulic schematics, normally closed means that it normally blocks flow. Unlike on an electrical schematic where a normally closed electrical switch allows flow, on a hydraulic schematic, a normally closed valve normally blocks the flow and something has to happen to open the valve and allow flow. A good way to think of a relief valve on a schematic, you see this jagged line under here, that indicates a spring. And think of the spring as pushing the arrow up away from the ports, holding the valve closed. This means that something needs to push down harder than the spring is pushing up in order for the valve to open and allow flow. You see the dotted line. The dotted line on a hydraulic schematic means a very small line, usually a pilot line or a drain line. This is a pilot line. Now, according to Pascal's law, which is pressure in a confined body of fluid acts equally in all directions, then the pressure in the pilot line will be equal to the pressure in the main hydraulic line. Notice on the spring that there's a 45 degree angle arrow going through the spring. A 45 degree angle arrow means that a component is variable or adjustable in some fashion. More often than not, it means that there is a knob on that component, something for the knob turner to get his mitts on. Now, every plant has a knob turner, right? Knob turner's name is usually not me. You know, who messed with the knob over there? Not me. Well, the last time that not me got hold of this knob, he set it at 500 PSI. So in order to go through the relief valve, pressure must build to 500 PSI. So that's the resistance in this direction. Let's follow it in the other direction. We get to this component that looks kind of like a bow tie. 
This is a symbol for a manual valve, a hand valve usually. Could be a ball valve or a gate valve. It's open because you see that the uh, symbol is not filled in. When the symbol is not filled in, that means that it's open. And whenever the manual hand valve is open, it adds no resistance to the system. It's as though it's not there. Downstream, we get to a 55-gallon oil drum with the top cut off of it. So if I turn my pump on, what would be the path of least resistance? Would the oil go through the relief valve or would it go into the oil drum? Well, if you said it would go into the oil drum, you're absolutely right. Obviously, that's the path of least resistance. So we turn the pump on, the oil goes into the oil drum, and what pressure do we read on the gauge? Well, if you said zero, you're right again. There is a little bit of resistance with the friction of the pipes, overcoming gravity and whatnot, but for all practical purposes, there is no resistance and the gauge would read zero. So does that mean that I need to change my pump? Well, of course not. A brand new pump would perform exactly the same way, would it not? But let me ask you a question. How many times have you seen a pump changed for no other reason than because the gauge read zero or lower than someone thought it should be. Personally, I've seen it hundreds of times and it's typically a mistake. Now, if I close the hand valve, now I've blocked off my no resistance flow path. There is no flow path except through the relief valve. What's going to happen now? Well, when I turn the pump on, pressure is going to build. Once it gets to 500 PSI, it will go through the relief valve and back to tank. What does my gauge read now? 500 PSI. Like I said, what you're reading on a gauge is not the pressure the pump is putting out. What you're reading on the gauge is how much resistance is currently being overcome in the hydraulic system. If you found this tip handy and useful, then visit our website at gpmhydraulic.com and learn about our two-part training program.